spiritual practice and meditation. We should not think this is something selfish. By no means. All the great masters of the past, like my teacher Ken Sejin Moshe, spent 30 years in retreat. Ken Sejin Moshe was the same. My teacher Ken Sejin Moshe, so many years. If practicing is about destroying the clinging to self and selfishness, how can this be selfish? It's like to saying to someone who builds a huge hospital for many years, oh, all this electricity work, plumbery, um, you know, cement work, doesn't help anyone. Just go in the street and operate. This is stupid. When the hospital is ready, it's so much more beneficial. Likewise, when someone becomes like Ken Sejin Moshe or His Holiness the Dalai Lama, you can see how much more they can help sentient beings. This is the result of, in case of His Holiness, 60 years of practicing four hours a day and spending time in retreat. So, of course, at the heart of benefiting others, this is achieve, progressing to enlightenment. After all, in the great vehicle, we say that the goal is not to become a Buddha. Full stop. It's to become a Buddha in order to be able to display the enlightened activities for the beings to remove their suffering. So that is crucial. And the Buddha also has the faculty to see the karma of sentient beings, how many lifetimes they have roamed in samsara, roamed in ignorance, and then give them the teaching that is perfectly appropriate for them to get out of the vicious circle of samsara. So, in a way, of course, progressing on the path through meditation is the ultimate way and the only way, in the end, to really help sentient beings, because otherwise you are just patching up with the symptoms. You are not getting at the root cause of suffering, which is ignorance, which is not knowing that all phenomena are empty of inherent existence, then delusion sets place, you solidify, reify the world, attraction, repulsion, and then endless suffering.